AMD's new GPUs can go faster than we thought they could, and there actually might be a lot of them to go around. And Intel wants you to know that they're worried about low power consumption, not gobbling up all the juices. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And in case you live under a rock, yesterday was the review embargo lift on the RX 7900 series GPUs. You can go to the video cards roundup. They typically have every every single outlet that would post about these GPUs and you can watch your favorite creators talk about them. I'm just gonna take the moment to give a shout out to Gear Seekers. They just passed 200,000 subscribers, amazing content creators. Go watch the review of the XTX in case you're so inclined. But the real hidden thing, okay? The thing most people were talking about is the fact that the XTX is fast, all right? It beats the 4080 in most gaming scenarios, but at a much cheaper price. It does not come close to the 4090, although it does in some instances. The XT version is like, yeah, I guess if you're only gonna send, spend 900 bucks, it's like fine. It's like a better value, sort of, kind of, but it's not like great. The ray tracing on the 7900 series is like on par with the RTX 20 series, so still worse than Nvidia. It doesn't have all of the feature sets that you would want. It's good at some professional applications and way worse at others, anything that requires CUDA acceleration. So when it comes down to the whole of what people use GPUs for, it's a toss up compared to Nvidia. But if you look at it on pure frame rate versus Nvidia, well then, AMD makes a ton of sense. There are some driver bugs, there are some issues. However, in that, there actually might be huge untapped potential because a lot of the reports I was seeing was you could kinda overclock it to three gigahertz, but somebody found out, no, it goes well past that. Somebody got it to 3.7 gigahertz on the front end and 3.5 gigahertz on the shader clock, which is just absolutely huge while also maintaining very respectable temperatures in the 80 degrees Celsius region and consuming a little bit more than what the GPU was supposed to, coming in at around 400 watts as opposed to the 355 TGP. But I will remind you, this is not on liquid nitrogen. This is just raw overclocking. They just straight up ham dogged, increasing that clock speed. And it's up to 75 teraflops or a 44% increase over the stock graphics card. The XTX comes in at 61 teraflops. The XT is coming in at 52, but with that 3.5 gigahertz, 75, that is massive, okay? But there are some issues. According to the reports, the SIMD32 units have no supporting measures for registration registers and two FMA instructions and Wave 32 units can only use one source per operated register and one shared immediate value, which according to what I'm hearing, it means that there's untapped potential in these graphics cards. These 7900 XTX can potentially get even faster if AMD can work out either driver or BIOS issues that might actually be playing in the card. AMD might not have sandbagged their launch, but they could potentially just age like tremendous fine wine. This could be one of those generations where we see massive improvements after the fact. Again, that doesn't mean you go out and buy it. Always take this with your buying what is available right now, but if your card could hit 3.5 gigahertz and they could fix some of these issues on the back end and they get better driver support, holy crap, did we just get one of the best GPU increases in like modern history. This is fantastic, potentially. But they're launching today, and some people might choose to wait out for a GPU, and I know that we did it for the RTX 4090 series, and we were gonna do it for the 7900 series today. I was supposed to be at Micro Center right now, but uh, my son got sick, and so I couldn't. But you know what I would have done? I would have used today's video sponsor to, to actually wait out. My friends, today's video is sponsored by Vessi, just like a hot cup of cocoa on a cold day for your feet, or if you're thinking about giving them as a gift, it's like getting socks in your stocking, but way better. My Vessi sneakers are my favorite pair of shoes that I own. I exclusively wear them when I'm going out, whether it's in the summer or in the upcoming winter season where everything's gonna get really cold and I have to slump through the entire snow and slush that happens. I'm not worried because I have a pair of my Vessi sneakers, which are 
made from Dymatec, which is a dual climate knit material that will keep me cool in the summer, but warm in cold weather. It doesn't feel like they should be weatherproof, but they are, and they're comfortable, they're lightweight, they're breathable, they feel great on my feet. I never feel at the end of a long day that I have to take them off, nor am I ever worried about whether or not I can trudge through a puddle or some snow that might be falling on the ground. And they're comfortable, they're stylish, they're sneakers you can wear in every season. And in fact, I wore them on our Cannonball for the Cure charity stream where we ended up having a snowball fight in Utah, even though it was like 60 degrees when we started the trip, and my feet were not wet in the slightest, even though my hands were. And Vessies are the perfect gift under the tree and for your feet. You can check out their holiday sale at Vessie.com forward slash UFD tech. You can get the style and size you want now before they sell out. And if you miss the sale, you can use code UFD tech to get 15% off your entire order. We're picking a pair up of these for my son. My wife recently got a pair of Vessies. It really does make going out a non-concern with your feet. You know, your socks aren't gonna get wet. Your feet are gonna stay as warm as they possibly can be in the weather and they make a great gift. So get them for you or yourself this holiday season. Big thanks to Vessie for sponsoring today's video. Yes, my friends, I'm not able to wait out for the 7900 series in my Vessi shoes, but I might actually be able to pick them up online according to reports coming out and AMD might not actually have supply issues of these cards. According to reports, there might be 200,000 available for Q4, which is uh, just about a couple weeks left in, in that time frame. Allegedly, there's going to be 30,000 reference built AMD cards on launch today, which is today. As you're watching this, the card should be available on Amazon Newegg and all the other places that you could potentially go purchase it. So it's not a tremendous amount of cards. That's not the largest launch we've ever seen, but it does seem to be a decent amount. So if you want to get your hands on a card, you may be able to. It's, it's hard to say. I'm looking forward to it. Some listings popped up on Amazon before it was ready the xt version of the 7900 was a little bit more expensive about 80 dollars more the xtx was about a hundred dollars more but i'll tell you the card that i'm looking forward to yestin announced their sakura gpus and oh my goodness this does not have the anime woman on the back which makes it fit into a few more design schemes that not everybody would have uh, tolerated otherwise. But the colors on this are, I just, Yestin does some wild things with their GPUs and this is the most tame, but also like I want to see more of this in the GPU game. We've talked previously about how ASRock came out with their B650 live mixer motherboards recently. I absolutely love that. Bring more personality back into the gaming space, please manufacturers like I just I got like you have the rock strict stuff which is just like so over polished this is something that I've kind of been noticing in the gaming scene as a whole like everything is becoming too homogenized too streamlined and it's just there's not enough pop going on in the gaming space anymore. That's that's my opinion, but I wanna hear from you. What do you think of the 7900 series launch? Did you manage to pick one up? If you're watching this past when the cards went on sale, I wanna hear from you down below in those comments. And you're gonna hear about crypto stunks because it's actually scooching on up as I'm recording. Bitcoin's up only a quarter of a percent, but it was down for the majority of the day to be under $17,000, passing 17,169 as of the time of filming. The Ethereum also having a nice surge as well, up 0.38% to be at 1271, and Dogecoin not surging at all. Dogecoin down 6%, and I, I, if you wanna tie it to Elon Musk, I'm sure that could make sense. And I wanna tie myself to Reese, I like that guy. He brings us the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hey buddy! Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. I remember how microphones work this time around, so let's go. Starting off with the Sony WH-XB910N, which are their extra bass wireless noise cancelling headphones going for only $124.99, which is $125 or 50% off. And then we have the Asus ROG Strix G15 Advantage Edition, with its 15.6 inch 1440p 165Hz display, Horizon 9 5980HX, 16 gigs of DDR4 memory, a Radeon RX 6800M, and a 5 12 gig SSD going for only $1,000.99, which is $600 off. And then on the Team Blue side of things, we have the Intel Core i9 12900K. With its eight performance cores and eight efficiency cores, you can pick this up for $438.99, which is $181 off. And then the only way I'll ever recommend a hard drive is if you go big with this 14 terabyte external hard drive from Western Digital going for only $199.99, which is $95 off. And don't forget, you can find these and more linked in the video description. But until next time, enjoy the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Guys, can we just show some Reese appreciation in the comments. 
He just brings you the UFD deals every day. He lives in a completely different country and in a completely different hemisphere. It's just, and he, he works on Mac. So he's bringing you like PC deal. It's weird. It's a weird situation. I like that guy. You know what else is a weird situation? Having Intel graphics cards. I'm still not used to it. It's a brand new thing that we're all experiencing. Speaking of, I've got a box here on my floor next to me. Oh, hey, look at that. I also have the B650 Live Mixer motherboard still in my box from when we did the ad spot a while ago. Anyways, the reason I'm bringing this up is because Raja Kadori, who's the head of Intel's GPUs, talked about their plans moving forward. Number one, uh, reconfirming their plans to move forward with a Battle Mage and Celestial gaming graphics card, which has been reported as being dead. I'll eat my words if Intel actually pulls out of having these as being gaming GPUs, but for the most part, Every single Intel source has said that they're committing to actually releasing multiple generations of this. But within that, the idea is that they're not going to necessarily be focusing on the higher end stuff, talking about how there's just this huge race at the top to go high end, which could be six to eight hundred watts. You can get ridiculous. You could have massive GPUs. But the plan for Intel is to really go for that one power connector setup where you're delivering 200 to 225 watts and giving the customer the best bang for buck in that scenario area, which is something that we see, especially last week, we talked about how Steam has a new top GPU, the GTX 1650, finally overtaking the GTX 1060. People eat those cards up. Most people are buying those cards. The RTX 3050, the RTX 3060, the GTX 1650 to 1660 Super. Everything in that range is really where the mass consumers are purchasing. If Intel can not only deliver a great value at that power consumption, but also continue to reiterate in working on their drivers, just like they brought out that DX9 enhancement last week, we actually might have some severe competition in the mid tier, which is which has been lacking, honestly, since the RX 580 versus GTX 1060, there has not been another good head to head fight. The RX 5500 XT was just essentially a brand new RX 580. The 1650 was kind of just a new 1060. There hasn't been a lot of innovation in that mid-tier sector. I really want to see that happen. I would love if RDNA 3 competed on that. I don't know if Nvidia is going to do it. I'm hoping Intel's going to do it. We'll have to see how that goes. And I'm going to go now. Hot news is over.